Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kathy Groover. And I'm Jason Mefford. And we're liking doing these little question things, so... You never know, we might have a lot more, but, but, you know, again, with everything that we do on here, right, because we have your interest at heart. We do these podcasts because we love doing them, but we love sharing and, and know that as you listen, right, your life gets better because you're learning things. You're going to pick up some things from what we're talking about and what you learn may even not at all be related to what we're talking about but there's something that you will get out of every episode so it's fun so again regardless of what we're talking about just listen so you can receive what you need to hear today so we're going to do another question so this one comes again from the vulnerability is sexy uh, break the ice part so yeah so if you we love playing games here too in our family so but uh, yeah, this is one that we'll probably be pulling out to, to play with other people too. But so here's the question, Kathy. Share your first vivid memory from childhood. Yeah, this is going to reveal a lot about me. So I literally was just talking to a client about old toys, toys that we had in the 70s. And Jason, I know we're kind of the same age, aren't we? Um, mm-hmm. Do you remember those like blow up big, clowns that you'd oh, yes! they'd fall down and stand up okay so oh, yeah. I, I got I had a bozo. one of those i i did too and i got a bozo the clown you it was a punching bag thing it was tall i think it was like five feet tall and you'd punch it and it had a weighted bottom so it would go weeble you know and they would stand back up and you'd hit it and it would fall down so i got one of those for christmas and several weeks after christmas uh and i remember i was in little jeans and my little red keds and my pigtails and i was playing with the clown and because I was an only child, everything to me, I anthropomorphized everything, right? So I'm having a whole conversation with this clown and I decided it was time for the clown to go to sleep. So I laid the <laughs> clown down and it stood back up and I started to get very frustrated with said clown. So then I laid it down and I stood on it and I put a blanket on top thinking that would happen. And of course it shot up and the blanket went flying across the room. So I went to my dad's tool bench and I got a screwdriver and I stabbed it. And that was the end of Bozo the Clown. He slept. It was a long sleep. And I was thinking back to that, and I'm like, so my parents either had one or two responses, and I don't remember what they did. Either they were like, holy crap, that was the most clever thing ever. Like a five-year-old or four-year-old figured out that it was inflated and that if I stabbed it, it would go to sleep. Or they thought, oh shit, our daughter's a sociopath. I mean, so those were the two choices. But I thought it was very clever that I thought to like, puncture it to make it lay down so yeah that was one of my very first memories well and, and it's interesting because again it's you know for for most of us and i mean this is just the way our brain works right is it through the first seven seven to nine years something like that as as our brain is developing we we kind of lose a lot of the memories at least consciously before that time so it's it's typically you know difficult for us to remember some things and so that's why it's always interesting for me like I mean this is it's kind of a random one but you know I I would have only been four years old right at, at the time and I remember you know sitting in well, and I, I'm trying to remember exactly which room it was. Yeah, okay, it must have been in, downstairs in our basement. Uh, watching TV when uh, Jimmy Carter was inaugurated as president. Uh. And I remember, <laughs> again, random, my dad making some comment about, I can't believe that guy is our next president or whatever kind of thing, right? <laughs> it's like, as a little kid, I didn't, I didn't know anything right sure. but you know I, ha- I had to have been f- only four at that time but i i remember that and you know again it probably had some subconscious programming on myself as well because that was just an example of some indoctrination of my parents mm. political views that made it into me right uh-huh. and, and so it's 
Oh, it's interesting, actually, that we're going here, because here's, here's a little learning lesson, I guess, too, right, is that, so, so for a while, you know, growing up, and especially, you know, maybe early adulthood, I, I always had this subconscious thing about Jimmy Carter being like this guy who doesn't deserve to be president, he doesn't know what he's doing, whatever, whatever kind of thing, right? But the more that I've come to learn about him, who he is, the man he is, uh-huh. what he was thrown into as president at that time, and I have a tremendous amount of love and respect for that man now uh-huh. and for what he what he tried to do as a president that was very hard because of the situation that we were in in the world at the time but even more so for what he's done in the background Uh the rest of his life that nobody knows about yeah and he's still alive he's still alive he's one of the most influential uh behind the scenes people that has probably done more good for this world than Uh most people have so interesting so there's a little takeaway in there too about some of the programmings and stuff too yours was so much more important than mine (laughs) well no 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 it's just like i said it it always just but see there's things to learn behind yours too yeah right resourcefulness the resourcefulness problem solving Uh Uh uh-huh why i don't like clowns now (laughs) (laughs) no i actually was a clown for a while uh (laughs) <laughs> no I really was it was uh not one of my best moments no but it's it, in thinking back, just thinking back about memory especially young childhood memories they're often I mean there's some reason we remember those things right I mean like I remember running down the stairs to bring something to my parents and I tripped and fell and fell down the stairs I remember walking over to my dad's workbench where there was a razor blade and not knowing what it was and slicing my finger so it's like Ooh. normally those memories especially young are triggered because it's something traumatic scary painful or so filled so joyous right you know there's a there typically is high emotion for those younger memories so for some reason you hearing your dad maybe it was the tone of whatever he said about jimmy carter that for some reason stuck with you the same way me (laughs) stabbing the clown so i don't know if i got in trouble and that's why i remember that i don't know if i was so proud of myself so i got in trouble i don't know if i thought it was funny i don't know if i was upset because i'm shut now it won't stand up yeah. I think I kind of think it was that there were a I, lot of emotions going on. I think, I think with that. At, yeah. At I mean, I solved my you. problem. Then I realized, Oh shoot, I just broke my toy. Yeah. So that was probably not a good feeling as a little kid. So, but it's so fascinating if we look back and, you know, we talked about this before of what we did as a kid uh, you know, the, the things that we thought and what we played as, you know, influence us later. So yeah. Interesting. It's such an interesting question. Yeah. Cause a lot of it does, you know, and, and when you kind of chart it out, because like I said, there's there's different things. I've been doing some, it's not necessarily childhood work, but some some things about uh, around some writings and some things that I'm doing um, from earlier memory. Uh-huh. And, and it's amazing when you start to look at some of those different things that do come to your mind and you start kind of charting them down, the time period when it's happening, what was I learning? What were the emotions that I was feeling? Uh-huh. You can see, you know, so it's become clear for me as an example, why I do or do not do certain things as an adult because uh-huh. of some of those things. There's some themes uh-huh. that I can see through that. Now, again, it's it's things that are good about me, but it's also some things that I might want to change too. Yeah, but it's interesting because those themes keep showing up and showing up and showing up as we go back and 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 look at it. And again, it's not to try to to try to you know jump into it, deal with all the emotions or other stuff like that at the, at the time, unless you need to go through that. You know, again yeah. through hypnotherapy, talk therapy, whatever other modality you want to use to try to work through some of that stuff if you need to work through it. But I found it especially. Uh, helpful right in understanding why i'm the way i am now yeah 
Well, and that's such an important question to ask because I have clients that have, you know, when I'm doing coaching with them, they have limited beliefs. They will say, well, I shouldn't do this, or it's the shitting all over ourselves thing, right? That so often isn't our belief system. So I'll ask the question, well, is this your belief? Is this your thought? Or is this something that you were told as a kid? Is this something that was drilled into you by your parents? Is this something you overheard every night at the dinner table? Is this, you know, we're really influenced by that sort of stuff. So it's important to sort of suss out what is your belief system and your goals and what do you really want? And what is that programming from society, parents? You know, did you hear your entire life? I can't wait to have grandchildren. You've got to have grandchildren. And now you feel forced to have a child because it's like, well, that's the thing you're supposed to do. You know, I have that conversation all the time with people. Why do you want children? No, well, my mom said that she wanted it. Well, okay, but what do you want? You know, and so I think often that 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 gets blended of what we're we're sort of programmed with as a kid and adolescent and what is actually our belief system now. So it's good to ask these questions. Well yeah, because I would say, you know, and again, you've seen this from people you've worked with and so have I. I don't know what the percentage is, 80, 90% of our belief systems or somebody else's programming of us it's not actually it's not actually even us of what we want it's it's a lot of times those things that were kind of programmed into us right so again even just back to the the jimmy carter thing right i mean there was it wasn't explicitly said but it was kind of my family was from a certain political party and it was kind of expected that that's what you believed and that's Uh how you voted as well right and you know the more i thought about it and realized and I mean I'm really apolitical now anyway but but I tend to to because you have to by you know bipartisan thing you got to vote for somebody right 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 but but it's it's the waking up and like you said of deciding well am I doing it just because it's what I think somebody else expects or what's been programmed of what's acceptable yep or is it really what I am, what I want to do, what, who I want to be. And sometimes it can be scary because you do end up, you know, sometimes having to walk away from things or do other Mm -hmm. stuff associated with it, but it's so much more freeing to just realize that the choices you're making are the choices you want to make. Yeah. Not what someone else expects. Not what somebody else expects. Well, asking those questions, where did that come from? Why do I believe that? Why do I think that? and think for yourself. Cool. And we just hit our 12 minutes. There we go. We're good. Hey, man. (laughs) Do my little- So go out, deflate a clown. No, don't deflate a clown. (laughs) Don't deflate a clown, but but those were really good for taking anger out. Yeah. As well, if you were mad or a punching bag. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently I took my anger out. (laughs) Screwdriver. (laughs) Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Have you, have you upgraded to an ice pick now? Or are you still use the screwdriver? No, it's the screwdriver. Yeah, I'm a classic. I don't want to. I'm not fancy. <laughs> no. All right. We should end now. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm Kathy. I'm afraid to get my website now. I'm Kathy Gruber. I can be reached at kathygruber.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great week, and we will see you on the next episode of the Fire and